Ladies and gents, boys and girls, sorry for the delay on this. This is the video on like some informational examples and how to set up the dial boost how to use it and get your brain going because you can realistically use this input to do many many things and once you see some of these hopefully it sparks some ideas so i understand majority of you are going to use this to directly or indirectly control your boost with electronic boost controller like a mac valve and uh, that's what i would recommend so once you get all this uh, you plug it in line you put the dial in your dash, and then you go straight to the green pigtail, and you're gonna to wanna to crimp that to one of the inputs, which um, should be fairly obvious, but we're gonna go over it, obviously. So you gotta crimp the green wire to one of your white wires, and those are inputs. And then what it's doing is it's giving a five volt signal back into the computer, and what you're gonna do from there is set up an input. So I like to call it dial a boost in. You just Punch in a name here for it. Uh, I like to make most of the in and outs called dial to make it easier to understand, obviously. And you're going to select 5 volt. And then you're going to enable it. And then from there, you go to configure. And we're going to go over the options set and talk about why we got to do all this. So, in order for this to work correctly, it needs some sort of correlation and figure out where you are on the dial and how to interface the HET with uh, what you're programming in to adjust your boost and everything else. So you would choose a custom 5 volt sensor. You would make a percentage based. This is the way I like to do it. This is the way I recommend uh, you do it. So it's going to give you a 0 to 100 at the end of this. Uh, 5 volt custom, percentage, and a 1 decimal point. No, or no decimal points. Uh, that's fine. 0% on the minimum. 100 on the maximum all the way up and down and then so say this was zeroed out right oh, here we don't have zeros over here well we're going to go zeros so what you would do is you would type in a zero down here and then you would type in five volts here it won't let you change the scale because it's a five volt sensor so you can highlight end to end and you can hit you can right click and hit fill rows or you can hit as you see there the R key so I'm gonna go across I like to use the keys because I do this stuff so often BAM it makes it a nice scale from end to end it fills the gaps between 0 and 5 volt on all the averages and then up top here you're gonna type in a hundred and then you're gonna type in zero so this is the mess uh, you want to highlight it all the way across again and you want to fill and then now you have, as the voltage comes up, the percentage comes up. So now you have a nice smooth scale to address every other function in the computer. So from here on, we will go to configuring an output. So since we have set up our input, we need to set up the dial output. And the easiest way is just the straight up dial a boost output. So I have a bunch of informational examples here uh, including these other things that i'm sticking with these tunes you will be able to download this tune file it's the same one that i keep updating for everybody to copy things off of you can also use the compare feature and copy it over but either way th this will be up there for you to look at you don't just have to judge all of this off watching the video this is more of a understanding so we're going to start with dial boost out the the very simple way to use this is the dial goes in uh, you're inputting a number and then the output you define uh, very easily no other interference so i like to name it dial a boost out just like i like to name it dial a boost in so every function in or out uh, if you're using them you understand uh, dial is the you know the first part of the name so name it dial a boost out choose pwm minus uh, enable it and then click configure so what you want to do here is trigger this when to work so it's turned off until we're choosing three items and it's all of them so if you set this to single it means the minute the tps is over 25 or rpm is over 450 
or MAP sensor is above negative two pounds, any one of those individually will trigger the output. So you want to give it all of these if then else statements. Uh, so choosing, choosing all means when RPM is over this and TPS is over this and MAP is over this, it turns on the output. So instead of it just working and rattling and doing whatever it's going to do, uh, it's easy to just turn it off, not wear it out, not use it at all in those instances. So for linked outputs, none. For a timer, make sure everything's unchecked. You don't need a timer. Uh, by default, this is how they are. So you should be able to breeze right across. And then on PWM here at the end, you're going to set this to fixed and these Two and three port Mac valves work really well between 15 and 30% or 15 and 30 Hertz. So very rarely do you need to change this in a lot of instances. Uh, 18 seems to work pretty good. 1820 is right in the middle of that 1530. So that works. I find 18 working a lot. So again, just probably just want to do that. And then you're going to set this to duty cycle. And the easiest way I find to do this is Choose RPM and then dial a boost input. So say uh, this whole table was zeroed out. All you would really need to do is go straight to the 100 row on the dial over here and type in 100. And then you can go like this, highlight the whole map, and you can hit fill columns, which means it's going to fill the verticals, or you can hit fill selected because they're all e the same number end to end. So you hit fill columns. And what you have here is when the dial's at zero, the boost controller duty cycle is at zero. And when you get towards 50%, it is 50%. And at 100%, it's 100% output. And uh, that's the simplest way to do it. And a lot of you might be thinking, well, I've done some raw output duty cycle testing here and I make, so say the car, your car quits making power and everything at 66% of the output cycle. So what you want to do here is go 66 and then you can again fill the columns and you have a 0 to 66 so you have better resolution in between. So if you had that dial and you didn't start making boost till 22 and you made peak boost at 60 for what you want, you'd only have like two, three, you know, three, four clicks out of 12 in here that, you know, generate the amount of boost you want. And then above that is unsafe and below that is nothing, which is confusing. So again, you can choke up on the uh, bottom end, set that as 20. So 20 to 66. Now you have a whole bunch of different boost settings all the way up. And if this was you to start and you had, see people that are buying this usually have the electronic boost controller already and they already have set it an output, like say they just highlighted the whole table and hit 40% and they've already tested it. So they know what is what. If you have no clue, what you should do is do zero. If this is your first time doing all this, and you should do 50 and you should blend that quick. And then if you go out and drive, you can data log and you can slowly go up on the switch and see what part of the dial equals what. And then in the data log, you can see what duty cycle it was. So say you make eight pounds on wastegate and it takes you till 40% of the dial, whatever that equates to about, you know, almost halfway up and you get two more pounds and then here's like 14 and here's like 18 and here's like 20 and you want to run like 26 on e85 so you would figure out your numbers and blend them in uh, accordingly for the most amount of resolution and then also you can change the fields down below see now you can see how this starts to get very uh granular and application specific if you want it to be so from there, uh, you can also say, man, I don't want to make a whole lot of boost down low. So very simply, we're going to just use 100 to 0 to accurately represent, like a, it's easier in your head to think of it this way. So say this is, say this is 5 pounds and this is 20 pounds. And down low, you don't want to make that much boost. So you can type in about a 50, and then you can blend this column. And then uh, 
Da -da -da. Column. And then from here and up, it's the, you know, 100% capable. And you can also come across and you can hit fill. So now you have like a nice little blend of high and low while the dial is going up with the RPM. And also, uh, you can do this by mile an hour and everything you can think of. And that will take us into our next tables. But again, I hope you understand, like, uh, it's easy to start off with. And then you can get complex as you uh, realize uh, what it's capable of or what the car is doing. And then the next two examples will show you uh, how to utilize that, like a more advanced feature of both and a good example and everything else. Moving on to one of the other more advanced ways to use the dial boost is go to another output and we will do flex offset. So dial a boost flex out and you would do the same thing. A PWM negative, uh, enable it and then go to configure. And again, I use the same options all over again. All of these have to be matching or above to activate the boost controller. Uh, this is blank, this is blank, and then here we go. So fixed 18 duty cycle, and then dial a boost input, and flex fuel. And uh, very simply put, so here's your dial amount, and here's your flex fuel amount. This is how you offset them. So say here, this is pump gas, and then up here is maximum amount ethanol. Uh, you could basically say again, I want to be able to use 100% of my boost controller up here, and I want to be able to use 50% of it down here, and then I want to blend it. So this is super quick rudimentary so you can understand it. So as you can see here on pump gas, you can only use 50% of the boost controller, and up here on E85, or you know close to it, you can use 100%. So here's the issue with that is the scale here uh, is not perfect for what you want to do with that. Here's what happens is on pump gas, you're usually around a 10%. So you're here. And then on E85, frequently you're never going to be that high, at least in our region. All of the cars are very similar. Uh, you know, they're only a, a good day. It's in the 70s. Like you're at 78% max, 72% most of the time. So the easiest way to make the scale more usable is to type in like a 15 down here. And I would type in a 60 down here. Anything over 60 is ready for full power on 99% of the cars that I tune. There is no difference in content at all. Uh, power wise going from 50 and up most of the time or it's marginal at best so to get your boost controller working correctly nicely you would do that and then since you're scaled here you know when you're bottomed out on this you only get 50 percent of your boost controller so the the caution here is uh, say your car makes 26 pounds here and 13 pounds here and then it makes five pounds here and here if you are all hopped up on that corn fuel and you can turn it all the way up to 26 pounds when you start watering it down with pump gas uh, and this is still at 26 pounds you're probably you're most definitely going to hurt something so, so you want it to be able to offset that so if you leave the dial cranked you empty the tank and you fill up with 93 91 whatever and you floor it and it makes 26 pounds and it, it breaks everything even though the tables are set up for fuel and spark. Uh, it's just entirely too much boost. There's nothing offsetting your boost. So this is what that does. It's a safety for if you're going to be swinging a lot of fuel or you're a forgetful person. So you're going to be using the boost output anyway, the dial boost output. So you can just offset it by flex and you're set. And there's all sorts of ways to do it, which we can circle back on. But another thing that I just like to do is uh, once you're below a certain amount, you, you don't need, like, it doesn't need to be blended like this nicely. So, so say this would all be a hundred, say above 48%, you have a hundred percent of your boost controller. No problem. Why not make it smooth because you're rarely just going to be dancing on these lines in my opinion. So you're going to fill the row 
And then below that, you probably want to start quickly lowering the boost amount. So say you only want a 60 here to zero. It doesn't really have to blend nicely. So now if you're over 50% roughly, uh, you have your full range of your zero, uh, five to 26 pounds, say. And then down here, you know, you only make zero to, or five to 13 pounds. Totally safe if it nicks this line. You can even do, uh, just put it right in the center or whatever. I mean, there's 50 ways to do this, guys. So uh, hopefully this is giving you all the ideas. You can even, if you want to be really safe, I can, uh, instead of blending it at all like this, you can go here and go to flex output. Sorry, I, I hit back incorrectly there. Input triggers. So you could hit a number four and you can say flex fuel, flex fuel for the boost controller to work at all. The flex fuel has to be over 48%. So in this instance, the boost controller won't even turn on unless you have higher than this amount. So instead of complicating the dial or blending it, uh, it's nice to have the blend obviously, cause it'll give you, you know, majority of your power. But here again, it'll turn the boost controller off. It'll only run wastegate unless it's over 48%. So those are all good examples for you guys. Just wanted to lay all of that out. So for the last one here, hopefully your brain is cooking and uh, you're thinking about stuff that you want to do and you can do now. What uh, you could do for high idle, I just thought this up in my head. Uh, you can enable a 2D table and you name it high idle. And uh, what you can do here is it's not using any outputs. So you have to use an advanced table and you can change your target idle speed offset and you could do dial a boost in and RPM out. So uh, whatever's easiest for you, you can swap these. Uh, we could do RPM and then we can do dial a boost in. So what we have here is uh, we would make the RPM scale more usable because they always just dump in, I think, the maximum RPM and the minimum. So say you just type in 300 and then 5,000. I mean, you really don't, the scale doesn't really much matter as long as it makes it easy to work with. And then again, I just like to interpolate everything. It helps me sleep at night. It's all smoothed out. So now this is an offset. Well, it explains right here. Zero RPM is the neutral value that does not modify idle speed. A positive value increases idle speed. So say here in your target idle speed, when you're warmed up, it's 850. So going back to our 2D advanced table, if you want to raise your RPM here, so say, man, I wonder if you could raise it 2000. So it'd be 2800. So say you want to raise it, man, I don't know, PTO stuff. What do you guys do for PTO? Yeah, let's do a thousand. A thousand over 850 is 1800, 2000. Let's see if it'll let us get away with 2000 over. No, it only lets us go a thousand over. I wonder if that would work out. But anyway, regardless of how this works or doesn't work, you can see how turning up the dial will add RPM. That's it. Target idle speed offset. I wonder if you can push the IAC way up. Oh, there we go. Percentage of IAC. Can you do 100%? Oh, this would probably work better, but it wouldn't change your target idle. So, but anyway, uh, you can see how this stuff would work. I don't want to get too crazy with it. Uh, nitrous offset. Yeah, drive by wire offset. Uh, all sorts of things here. Pretty cool. Very cool. And uh, that's mostly it. Uh, I hope you got a lot of uh, examples and ideas out of all this and see how to do them. And I will put this file up and you can copy them and look over them and that's it. Thanks for buying. I hope you enjoy it. All the above and have a good day. Bye.